Hello and welcome back to Desktop Publishing with Quark Express. Now, last week we talked about uh, transparency modes, uh, so multiply screen and so on. We talked about image editing uh, and we talked about uh, gradients. This time we're going to talk about uh, the new text stroking. We're going to talk about new text framing and we're going to talk about the new text shading. So let's go uh, straight to the screen and we're going to look at uh, text stroking first. Now, this is a feature which a lot of people have been asking for for some time. Um, just zoom back in on that. Uh, and uh, it, it is, as, as you would expect, uh, you can put a stroke on a text. You can call it outline if you prefer. Let's just select that text there. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is we will look at how that is made. So let's go to the bottom of the screen and we're going to go to character and we're going to go right over here to uh, where it's a stroke. And it's all very self-explanatory. Uh, the stroke color, you can change that to a different color. Uh, just come off there for a second. You've got to be selecting the text while you're doing this. So it, it, it does make it slightly more difficult to see, um, but that's not a problem. Um, and then we can change the uh, the width. Now, um, as I uh, explained to you last week, uh, you can now use the arrow keys uh, on the bottom of the keyboard to actually uh, change the uh, anything which is kind of digital. So I'm going to go up with the arrow, down with the arrow, and so on. And that changes the width. We've now got uh, three kinds of mitering. So the mitre is the join. And let's come in here and look at this X. So at the moment, I've got a mitre join of one. Uh, and I can increase that to two uh, or three or four or five or six, whatever. Um, this does depend on the size of the font, on the size of the stroke, and on the design of the font itself. So experiment. Um, you've also got a rounded join, uh, which you can see here. I've now clicked on, on that one. Uh, just come down here, look at that. Okay, and that very simply gives you a rounded join. Uh, not too difficult. And finally, you have a mitre join. That's always the same mitre join. So um, if you don't want to play with the numbers, you just get this straight one. Now, on the letter X, that's not so uh, interesting to look at. So let's go to a K here. And the K is interesting because it's got different angles. So at least this K in Helvetica does. And what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to select that K and uh, I've got a, a width of 12. I've turned no fill on over here. So you can have it filled or you can have it unfilled. Uh, and I've now got a mitre limit of three. Let's drop that down to one. Um, and you'll see that uh, here uh, we've got um, uh, an angle, a different angle, yet a third angle, a fourth angle. Now, What's going to happen here um, is that uh, as we change the mitre limit, those angles were going to change differently. So on mitre limit one, everything is mitered off. On mitre limit two, look at that. Um, these angles here have become sharp angles. So let me go back to one and see that's now changing to uh, back the mitered again. But even on two, this one, has stayed the same. Let's go back to the screen. So uh, mitre limit one, uh, all the angles are mitered off. Mitre limit two, only that sharper angle is mitered off. And if I go to three, that now is, uh, is, becomes a sharp angle. Uh, and uh, if I increase that further, uh, that doesn't really make any difference. Now, um, you can go up quite high in the mitre limits. You can't go, low, go below one. Um, and uh, that enables you to do interesting things uh, with uh, fonts and to have quite a degree of control. If you, if you want to have that um, ITC machine look uh, beloved by uh, American sports t-shirts, um, uh, so let's just go to Helvetica Bold. But you don't want to use ITC machine, you want to use, you want to use Helvetica because it's what you're using. You can now have uh, that mitre join uh, look um, quite easily and actually if we do no fill uh, then it becomes all the more apparent. So let's get in there and have a look at that one. Uh, and uh, so you get 
uh, a different look. Now, I've, I've got to say that um, when this first was discussed uh, on the Quark Facebook page, uh, and uh, I, I, would, I would strongly recommend you, you, you get on that page and, and, and become a member of that group, I really wasn't that keen on the idea of introducing uh, stroke text because um, stroke text is, is not as the font designer designed it. So be careful here. Just because you can do it doesn't necessarily mean that you should do it. Well, okay, that's my caveat, my word of warning. You do whatever you want to do. Let's go on and talk now about uh, text uh, shading. So um, text shading is, again, uh, looking over here and out the screen, um, is uh, an interesting effect. So now what I've done with this one, uh, let's come down to that and have a look at it directly. So I've selected a load of text and um, uh, there are two kinds of text shading. I need to begin by saying that. So you can have paragraph shading and text shading. Now for this one, for this demonstration, I've chosen text shading. Paragraph shading is perhaps generally more useful. I've cho chosen text shading for now. What I've done is I have got uh, a color uh, and um, I've got uh, a transparency of that color. Uh, and now I've got the indents and the offsets. So uh, just come off that for a second. So that's my color. Um, and I can actually have a negative offset. So I can have uh, a kind of a, I didn't set the entire text there. I, I can have a, a, a what is effectively uh, a, um, a tide on that. Let's make that two for everything. Um, and uh, that's a very interesting effect. But generally speaking, you'll be, uh, you'll be setting this to be um, positive values um, uh, where the box will now come out uh, beyond the text. So uh, let me just get rid of all of that. So I'm going to just go back over here to move the colors around. Uh, I'm just going to go back to normal. Um, uh, we'll expand the size again. So these are style sheetable. Uh, text stroking style sheetable directly uh, in the character style. So if I just click on that, uh, you can see that um, over here, we've got all the text stroking. Text shading uh, is going to be styleable by creating text shading styles. And I'm going to come to that in a second. But for now, uh, let's just come back to this. And this time, I'm not going to select the text color. We're going to select paragraph. And this gives me more options uh, in terms of um, I can do the indents. Uh, let's just get some uh, get some color on that so we can see what we're doing. I think we're going to go for uh, Pantone 3514 this time. Uh, and you'll see that entire paragraph is now uh, shaded. I can uh, change it to the indents. I can change it to just the text. So when you do text shading by uh, directly selecting the text with the cursor, then um, the result uh, is going to be one that doesn't occupy the entire paragraph. And, and that's excellent if you want to highlight some text in document. But when you have uh, text which you want to all be the same size and shape and, and fit nicely together, paragraph is going to be more effective. Paragraph is also easy to manage, so I can set indents, text, or column. And again, I can set that with a, uh, a, a positive value or, or a negative value. So I'm, I'm off that paragraph, actually, that's what it's doing the thing. Um, so uh, I can set to go up or down on that. Um, and I can also set wider indents. Uh, so for example, I want to get off the bottom of that G. Um, so I don't want the, the G to be cut off. So I'm just going to move that uh, round like that. Um, and again, I can set the edges and that will go outside the frame. Now, um, outside the frame is probably usually what you do want. But what about the situations? Let's come over here where actually you have a, 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 a shape um, uh, like this triangle. Uh, so um, let me just click on that triangle. Now I made that triangle using the new um, uh, triangle tool, which is over here uh, on the menu, on, also on the toolbar. Uh, and that's one of a number of shape tools which use the power of the, the shape maker. And shape maker is still there in utility if you want to use it. 
uh, and that's sometimes a good way of using it. But um, the shape maker is now as uh, symbols on the toolbar. So I've made a triangle here, and uh, I, I, I want to have some text in there. Now, if I click on this uh, text uh, and go to text shading, you can see it's paragraph mode, the color's there. Uh, and now uh, I'm going to go clip to box. Wow, look at that. Um, uh, beautifully clipped to the triangle. Um, now, I've, obviously, I've used some paragraph uh, returns to get that in, but uh, that is uh, a, a very, very kind of useful uh, effect, and uh, it will serve you well in many situations. I'm, I'm very pleased with this particular implementation. So um, you're well used, I'm sure, to uh, text shading and text stroking from uh, Microsoft Word and other applications, but the way that Quark does it uh, is uh, much more sophisticated, much more controllable. Now, uh, we don't just have um, the uh, text shading, uh, we also have text framing. So, okay, here is uh, a text frame, and again, I've created this um, using uh, the text mode, uh, Again, I could have gone to paragraph mode. I'm using the text mode here. I think I have anyway. Um, let's just check that. No, I, I've, used, I've used paragraph mode. Okay, so what you can see here is we get to choose between paragraph and text mode. So I'm in paragraph mode and I've ignored this side um, and I'm now uh, over here uh, on this side uh, looking at the framing options themselves. And what are we seeing here? Well, uh, solid. Uh, I'm taking so I could, I could take all dots. That's quite fun. Uh, I can uh, again change the um, uh, the size. I love that with dots. I could play with it all day. Um, I can change the color and the opacity. Now, one thing that is worth uh, understanding is that the um, text framing and shading uh, is actually uh, gradientable. So uh, you can uh, put in um, a, a gradient text frame uh, or a gradient uh, text background. You can't put a gradient on the text itself. Uh, but if you want to be really clever about this, you could actually do a kind of gradient effect by having the text respond to its own background using transparency modes. Um, so let's just put a, let's just create a gradient there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an axial gradient uh, and uh, we're going to get rid of that in a second. But I just want to save this. Um, so uh, add to colors, new gradient, okay. Uh, now I, I didn't want that, so uh, I'm just going to um, uh, get rid of that gradient background for the frame. Okay, but now that I've saved that as new gradient, if I come back down to text frame here, uh, I can choose from this list of colors new gradient. And as you can now see, the uh, gradient of the frame is uh, as I've set it. And we can do the same thing with text shading. So let's come back to text shading for a second. I'm just going to uh, select all of that. Uh, now it was a paragraph type. Um, so again, I'm going to change that to uh, Tewkesbury Sky. It's one I think we might have looked at last week. If not, we're going to look at it at some other point. Um, and my text shading is like that. So text shading, text framing, uh, very easy to use, uh, very powerful uh, in use, um, and fully stylable. But they're not directly stylable from the character or the paragraph styles. There is a different set of style sheets there, and we can take a look at that now. So on the screen, I'm going to go to uh, Window, and I'm going to go to Text Shading Styles, which is down here. And up comes uh, a menu, uh, a palette, uh, and just, we'll just create one. In fact, if I click on this one now, um, and now Create, it will adopt what I've put in there. It's quite useful. Uh, so. Um, what you can see here is it's uh, showing me a preview of what's happening. Now, uh, the shade side is on the left tab here. The frame side is on the right tab. I can turn those uh, frames on and off. So you can do the same thing with the measurements panel. Uh, so if I now um, will call that uh, right only, 
Uh, and um, if I now uh, apply that uh, right only, you'll see that um, the uh, appropriate style has been applied. Now, let's go to the styles menu. So I'm going to go to style sheet. So I turn that on there. Good. And uh, we're going to create a new style sheet, paragraph style. And we're going to call this uh, text frame, uh, text, text framed. And I'm going to go to format. And uh, we're going to uh, just uh, apply uh, down here, uh, text shading. I'm going to apply uh, text frame. So, okay. Um, okay, that's not what I was expecting. Um, uh, I think I must have created a different one at some other point. But um, as you can see, I can apply a text style. I need to come back to that at some other point and, and, and see what I'm doing. But um, uh, the, oh, that was, I called it right only. So that's, that's why I'm getting wrong here. I, I created a different style sheet at another time. So right only, I've also created one called text frame. Uh, which does that. You can do all kinds of things with it. Um, now, you can do the same thing with a character style. So if we create a character style now, and you can apply text shading. So this time we are going to get it correct. We're going to call it right only. Uh, and uh, if I now uh, just come out of that uh, and say, uh, I think I might have changed the entire document there. But um, uh, if I if I now so let's change that. Uh, so text shading. No, I didn't do that. So what was I doing? Okay, let's, let's create a new character style. We're going to call this uh, text shaded. So I'm losing myself there. I'm going to take text shading uh, is text frame. Uh, and now I'm just going to select that and we'll do that. And you can see that it's actually now got both uh, text frames I applied to it. And there are more things you can do with that. Well, that's... Um, all we've got time for uh, this week. Uh, we're going to look next week at some more of the new features. Um, I am hugely excited by the way these things work together uh, in combination. Uh, it, it's not just that Quark has introduced uh, 16 new features and 16 enhanced features, it's that the combinations of these new features are extremely powerful. Uh, I'm discovering new things uh, with every time I play with this, uh, I've already done the new book, Desktop Publishing with Quark Express 2017, using the uh, the final master version of Quark Express 2017. And it saved me literally days uh, in terms of doing things like the output sharpening, which we looked at last week. Well, that's all we've got time for this time. Uh, the new book is out. Please do have a look at it on Amazon or your local bookseller. From now, uh, happy Quark. Thank <laughs> you.